Good morning, and welcome to Food for Thought and our Advent edition of it. It's December the 2nd, 2020. Glad all of you could join us. Um, for those who are new, welcome. For our congregation members, it's hard that we can't meet together, but I'm glad that we can have this time of devotions together in the morning. So we've been focusing in on the hope of Jesus Christ this first week of Advent, the hope that he brings to us and the hope that he brings to the world. And um, when we recognize God's plan of redemption through the coming into the world of Jesus, uh, there's a great hope inside of us that builds. And um, let's go back to the time before Christ, 700 years before Christ. There was the nation of Israel struggling to obey God. They, they had been given so much by God. He had taken them through the land of Egypt and had given them possession of the promised land, the land of Canaan. But time and time again, God would call to his people to be true to him, but they had wandering hearts. Their hearts wandered away from him. And um, as a result, God sent his prophets to speak to them and, and to warn them that if they continued to disobey God and to worship other gods and to disregard his word, that they would actually get judged and they would be sent into exile. So we see the, the children of Israel in a state of disobedience and God sent his prophet Isaiah to them. And Isaiah, in Isaiah chapter 8, 21 to 9, 2, speaks to them. And he says this, Distressed and hungry, they will roam throughout the land when they are famished they will become enraged and look upward, will curse their king and their God. Then they will look towards the earth and see only distress and darkness and fearful gloom, and they will be thrust into utter darkness. Nevertheless, there will be no more gloom for those who were in distress. In the past, he humbled the land of Naphtali and the land of Zebulun, but in the future he will want honor Galilee of the nations by the way of the sea beyond the Jordan. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light on those living in the land of deep darkness a light has dawned. So we see the nation of Israel suffered the same plague as the rest of humanity suffers today. They were sinners and were bound over to the darkness of their disobedience. And God spoke through Isaiah prophesying about a future Messiah that would come. And he talked about how Zebulun and Naphtali had to be humbled because of their disobedient hearts. That was the reason. You see, Zebulun and Naphtali were the first two tribes of the ten lost tribes of Israel that were carried away by the Assyrians into captivity, never to return. And that same land... Uh, the land of Naphtali and Zebulun um, was in the northern part of Israel in the time of Jesus. It was known as Galilee in the Roman Empire. And uh, this is a, a marvelous prophecy of how a light would shine into the land of the Gentiles in the same place where Zebulun and Naphtali had been punished by God and humbled by him would be a light shining in the darkness of the world. And uh, this lines up with what we see in the New Testament in John chapter 1. And I'm going to read a portion of John chapter 1 because it really speaks to the, the light of the world in Jesus Christ. It says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Nothing without him was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of mankind. 
The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came into his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become the children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or of a husband's will, but born of God. The Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. We have seen His glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. So, we see the connection point. God had a purpose. He had a purpose in sending His Messiah into the world to be a Savior, to save the people from the plague of darkness the plague of sin that has covered our planet since the time of Adam and Eve. We see that the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, that first Christmas day, was a light that shines into the deepest darkness. Have you seen the light? I pray that you have, because if you have, you, my friend, are a child of God not born of natural descent or human decision, but born again in the Spirit and connected to God for all of eternity. This is the message of Christmas, that light has come into darkness and light has shone into the hearts of men. You see, the miracle of the Messiah is that although at one time we are alienated from God, At one time we were angry, shaking our fists at the sky inside of our hearts, some of us externally even, blaming God for our distress, looking into the darkness and seeing no hope. Jesus Christ has shone His light into us through His precious gospel. And anyone who receives the gospel of Christ receives the light of God because when Jesus... um, shines His light. You see, He died for our sins. He took our place. He died instead of us so that we could have life. And He does this by cleaning us of our sins. By removing our sins, casting them as far as the east is from the west, never to be remembered again, washing us sparkling clean on the inside. Not because we deserve it, but by His grace. And then depositing His Holy Spirit within us when we have accepted His message. When the sacrifice of God comes upon us, it cleans us so that the Spirit of God can rest inside of us and live inside of us. That's good news because it's a deposit for eternity. The light of God present in His precious Holy Spirit living inside of the hearts of men. Welling up a a river of life welling up into eternal life. This is the hope that we have in Christ. That one day we're going to be eternally with our Savior and with our God and together with the saints who have been washed by the work of Jesus Christ on the cross and filled with His Holy Spirit. Would you bow with me in prayer? Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for Advent. Thank you for the hope that there is in you, that you shone your light into the darkness, that you came and walked the shores of Galilee, the land of Naphtali and Zebulun. Lord, you shone that light, and you gave light to the world, and you've invited us to the table to be partakers with you in all that you have to offer. Eternal life, God, thank you for your eternal life for the light that shines in the darkness. In Jesus' name.
Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.